I wonder, do right. we have uh, Peter? Yeah. Am I straight or sideways? <laughs> uh, you're on a uh, mobile phone because of yeah. uh, problems with the internet connection. Is that right? Yeah, so the internet uh, where I live went down all weekend and they reconnected it Monday. But ever since, whenever it's on, every kind of minute it drops out for five seconds. Really? Yeah. Are we, talk so I was are we talking about the UK here or? Just, just, yeah, I'm in the UK, but just where I live. But uh, I was trying to record an interview last night. It wasn't working. So I had to cancel mine. I thought it might be repaired today, but it's still a problem. So we have to use the phone. Is that is the phone okay? Is it good enough quality? Yeah, sounds good to me. So uh, let's just uh, move on. So welcome to uh, our Bitcoin course, Peter. Uh, really appreciate uh, you taking the time to join us. Being Not a guest. problem. Very nice. So when I announced it uh, to my students, uh, clearly a lot of them... Uh, listen to your podcast so they uh, know who you are some of them, uh, my, yeah, some of my students uh, are new to uh, bitcoin and the bitcoin sphere so uh, i think you'll have to start by introducing yourself please well thank you for inviting me and and uh, hello to uh, your class it's uh, nice to meet you all I, ho I hope you're all studying hard um yeah this is uh my background really is I spent 20 years working in advertising. I worked in the digital side of advertising in the UK. Uh, that was my career until about six years ago when I kind of had enough of the commute to London and working 12 hours a day, uh, never really feeling like I was enjoying the job. So I quit. I had a kind of Jerry Maguire moment, wrote, a, wrote an article about all that's wrong with the advertising industry and, and quit um took a year out uh, my mum was six I spent a year with my mother uh, looking after her and then during that period kind of went down the bitcoin rabbit hole and not being particularly uh, I'm, I'm not somebody who understands technology too well or or economics I, I started a podcast just so I could speak to all the smartest people and ask them all the questions that I had and and uh are we are six days away from my fourth year so we're six days away from my own halving <laughs> and uh, and uh, I've done 425 interviews or something. I've been to 30 countries with this. I've made a number of films. I've managed to interview nearly everyone of the, the who's who of Bitcoin. And and uh, it's taken yeah. this point where I'm sat here talking to you. So thank you. <laughs> it's a remarkable journey uh, to use a cliche then. But uh, yeah, uh, you started from almost zero uh, four years ago, and uh, now you have one of the most popular Bitcoin podcasts, perhaps the most popular. I don't know. Um, I, think, I think I think it might be. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, it's really astonishing. And uh, is it? Uh, are you surprised yourself about uh, the development? I just for fun, I went back um, and listened to uh, the first episode. Do you remember it? Wow. Luke Martin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I messaged, I messaged him last night because on the second anniversary, we recorded again, me and him. And uh, so I reminded him it's coming up to the fourth anniversary. But yeah, I, I remember I remember where I was. I remember what happened. I, I messaged my friend who had a podcast. I said I wanted to launch one. Uh, we were at, I was in LA. He was in LA and he told me what to do. And I read this course about running a podcast. I went on Amazon, ordered the equipment. And then I contacted Luke and said... Uh, are you available this week? I'm going to launch a podcast. I want you to be interview one. And he said, "Yep." Yeah. And uh, we've been we've been friends ever since. Yeah. But uh, you asked, am I surprised? It's a, it's a it's a tricky one to answer. In that, am I surprised? There's things I'm surprised about. Um, am I surprised that I've uh, you know that I've managed to make it a success? No, and I don't mean that like in an arrogant way. It's just like. I've always felt like anything you do, if you work super hard, uh, if you work really hard and, and you're suited to that job, then then you can do it. Like uh, I could work really hard at being uh, a trader, but I'm not suited for that job. So I would have failed. Uh, 
or I could I could go and do a podcast and not work particularly hard. It might not be successful. But I think if you find a connection between something you're good at and something you're willing to work hard at, you can usually be successful at it. I think a lot of people fail. It's because they're either in the wrong job or they just don't work hard enough. So I'm, I'm not surprised it's done well, but like I'm surprised about a couple of specific things. Like I didn't realize it would be something that would have five employees full time working on it and generate, you know, a, a, an income for me. I thought it'd be a hobby. That surprised me. I didn't, I didn't think I'd end up traveling the world and making films. That surprised me. I didn't end up think, I didn't think I'd end up sitting down with the president of a sovereign nation and <laughs> interview him. That, so this, sure. this the, the, the scale of the things that have come outside of it have surprised me but the fact that itself like the downloads have done well no because I, I was always going to work hard and my background was advertising so i was always going to be able to market it yeah so your background helped you in some way so uh, you knew something about uh yeah how to reach the audience and uh how to scale perhaps but it was i think uh, it, it was interesting to hear your first episode again uh, i'm not sure mm. if i heard it uh, before but uh the, was it terrible the, no <laughs> it was very different from uh, today's now you're uh, a pro of course and uh uh, you sounded a bit more nervous, more, more like me when I interviewed you. <laughs> I probably was nervous. Uh, yeah, I think so. And the, the, the topic was uh, trading and uh, crypto yeah. and blockchain and uh, not so much Nonsense. Bitcoin. Uh, of course, Bitcoin also, but uh, more into trading then. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I was a crypto person back then i'm glad i did the show as what bitcoin did uh with bitcoin in the name but i was a crypto person it was about 18 months into it that i went bitcoin only back in 2018 i think it was i was like you know what i just i need to focus on bitcoin bitcoin is bitcoin is the important story here bitcoin yeah but you call your uh, podcast uh, what bitcoin did from uh, from the start on even yeah, though you, did... you were into crypto uh, also well, yeah, because I felt like what Bitcoin did is like Bitcoin led to all these other uh, cryptos anyway. So that kind of the name worked, but uh, I'm pretty much Bitcoin only. I will look at other things if it deserves a discussion. Like a lot of my listeners are crypto people. They will email me and say, yeah, I know you're a Bitcoin maxi P, but Ethereum has all these use cases or you should really think about Cardano. And I'm like, no, I'm not interested, but I will do like I've got a show coming out today, a discussion between Alice Gladstein. And Eric Voorhees debating crypto versus Bitcoin. And, and I'm happy to do that because I think it helps people understand and, and learn from that. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And uh, I think I'm, I'm quite uh, in line with you in that respect. Uh, I'm also, well, most people having been in this uh, space for some years, we've uh, done something, uh, we, we try uh, and fail and, um, then realize that uh, it's Bitcoin that counts. And uh, although there, there are some interesting uh, things in other blockchain systems as well, maybe particularly uh, Ethereum, but I agree with you. Bitcoin is uh, the main thing. And that's what I'm focusing on uh, in my teaching at this course. It's a Bitcoin course. I think more than 90% of it is Bitcoin and the fundamentals yeah. of Bitcoin. So I think it's in line with your uh, podcast but it's uh, it's uh, important to also be open to uh, other things if it's interesting uh, yeah, yeah i mean look uh, i had a discussion with uh Svensson, i can't remember his exact name how you pronounce it and he said well the problem with things is no value you can't get any value from these uh, they don't create any value and i was like well look I'm a was that, was that Knut Svanholm? Yeah, Knut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mistook I, I, him for a Norwegian, and <laughs> but he, ah. he pointed out that he was Swedish. So, yeah. Yeah. So he said they don't create any value, and I was like, "Well, listen, look, I'm with you. I think it's I'm a Bitcoin. I've got no interest in Ethereum, but you can't say it doesn't create value because if it didn't create any value, people wouldn't use it. Value is subjective, and yeah, and some people are getting value from it. And so I, I disagreed with him on that. I. I you know, I've got no interest in 
I've got as much interest in Ethereum really as I do have in Oracle. But to me, they're just forms of databases that can do something. They're not not going to fundamentally change the world. I mean, it's trending centralized, and it's just not that interesting to me. Uh, but, but yeah, I am. I'm up for people telling me some of the things they're doing on it. Yeah, they're creating NFTs. Cool. Yeah, just no interest. Uh, hmm. They people say. I think the only thing I'm mildly interested in the idea is that you can take take out some decentralized loan without the requirement for a company. That's kind of interesting, but I think there's some centralized components to that as well. But you know, whatever. Look, let the Ethereum people do what they do. For me, it's, yeah, yeah. There's so much. Uh, yeah. There's so much in Bitcoin that I'd rather focus on that. Absolutely, and it's almost impossible to keep up, uh, even if you. Uh constrain it to bitcoin it's it's really uh, it's such a fast uh, development and uh, so much happening so, there there's, so not, much. Uh, there's no time to follow uh, uh, anything else almost but i'd say that i, I agree uh, ethereum creates value i mean uh, also for bitcoin i mean uh, the stablecoin uh, thing uh, probably also benefits bitcoin and most of it yeah, uh, sits on Ethereum anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the stable coins are hard to argue with because they are useful to people. They are. They make trade more easy. So, yeah. Yeah, um, you talked about, we have to talk about uh, El Salvador because um, you spent uh, a lot of time in El Salvador yeah. and, and you are in the... <laughs> so to speak, inner circles of this uh, and have followed uh, this on, uh, very close to uh, those who decide, and especially uh, President Bukele. Um, so, and you have had, I think, two interviews with uh, the president. Is, is that correct? Yeah. One is public, one hasn't been yet, because I'm, I'm, we've got a film that's being made and I'm saving the important parts of that for the, that, um, for, for that film but yeah i've interviewed him twice and uh, i've been to el salvador i think one two three four five or six times now enough times to not remember the total number i uh, really love the country i love the people uh i think the bitcoin project's interesting there i think it's brave of what what they're doing it's almost like think of the early days of bitcoin itself you know when bitcoin first launched it was a you know it's bunch of nerds downloading the protocol and doing a bit of mining and sending bitcoin around and trying to figure out what it is like it's almost like the same again at a country level trying to figure out what it means what does it mean for a country to have bitcoin as legal tender what does it mean for a country to hold bitcoin reserves uh, and it's being figured out by the time country 20 signs up it'll be a lot more obvious you know the best way to do yeah, this it's but always most interesting the first one uh, to do this, and uh, and there are, uh, I think, uh, your late episode with uh, Aaron from Virdum. It's very interesting where you discuss uh, what's going on in El, El Salvador. Uh, when is your film coming out? By the way, mm, well, we're still we're still in the uh, we're still in the edit. Um, hopefully, I would like to think early December. Yeah, so it's a Christmas film then. Maybe <laughs> Christmas. Yeah. Though, it's over in Christmas. Eve. I just yeah. in the in this, you know, it's it, yeah. We, we finished it a long time ago. Now we we need to get it. We need to get it finished. But it's an interesting film, and I'm looking forward to getting it out. I think we've done a yeah. good job. How will it be published? Or uh, well, uh, I mean, as a minimum, it will go on YouTube. But um, I think possibly. I, I mean, I would approach any. Uh, I think someone like Vice. It would be good for it's whether they would want to take it but uh we're going to get the edit done i'll show it to a couple of the networks and see what they say mm. will it be open or uh... it'll be open yeah yeah good look forward to that um yeah el salvador there's a lot of questions uh one of, one of the questions or challenges is the on one hand you have el sonte with the this bottom-up uh project going on, on for some years and then you have uh, President Bukele with a clear top-down approach um, are there there are some links there but uh, how obvious are these links how how, how clear are they the link from mean? El Sante to uh, to the president what do you mean by link 
Uh, how much has El Sant uh, had to say for Bukele's decision? I mean, I don't think Bukele's decision would have happened without Zonte. I mean, I think what happened was Zonte happened, then Jack Mallers and Strike happened, and then the president took notice and said, okay, we need to look into this. Now, what I don't know is if he was looking anyway or it's what sparked him, but uh, my suspicion is that it's the Zonte project, the Bitcoin Beach product, project by Michael Peterson, which triggered all of this. That's what I would have thought. But there's nowhere in knowing, you know, that's that's only the president can answer that. Yeah. And there's also, of course, uh, other questions to uh, the president um, kicking out judges from the high court and um, the, the, the Supreme Court and um, maybe showing authoritarian uh, moves moving in, uh, well, not a democratic direction. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, it's the big question over El Salvador. Alongside, will will the will the big will the Bitcoin project work? And also, you know, what is the Bukele end game? Uh, El Salvador has a constitution that says that the president can only serve a single term, and mm. it's, I think it's becoming quite obvious that he's going to run a second term. And and during this first term, he you know, kicked out, as you said, some of the judges. He removed the attorney general. He went into uh, he went into their version of the parliament with soldiers. Mm. Um, yeah, he's done a lot of things that that appear authoritarian. Um, he um, he would say because I've spoken to him that they're cleaning house, and you know this is a country with a history of corruption, and you need to you know. So in point dealing with it, but the um, you need to get deal at the root cause. You need to dig out the roots and remove them. Um, it, you know the last four presidents, one's one's in jail, two two are hiding out in Nicaragua, one's dead. They all stole a bunch of money. Uh, they were surrounded by uh, fellow corrupt politicians who were milking the country dry. So he has uh, so far there doesn't feel to, it appear to be any financial corruption. Um, and so he said he wants to change the country at the moment. He he's having a lot of success with certain aspects of improving the country. I just think we're going to have to see how this one plays out. We can't stop him doing what he's going to do. It's, it's not like I can stop him. Or it's not like the US government is going to stop him. He's going to do what he's going to do. It's, and if he runs a second term and he earns a second term, I think the biggest question is, like, OK, what now? Is it yeah. a will there be a, will there be a third or fourth? That's the yeah. critical. And I ask them uh, these questions, yeah. but I, I mean, I I think if you look at any dictator's playbook, there is evidence that he is doing some things which are similar, but there also is evidence that he's doing some really good things to move the country forward for them to be a leader in certain things. I sadly one of the the difficulties is we won't know until we know whether he is a dictator or he well he's a traditional dictator or benevolent dictator we won't know until we know uh yeah and um i think there are things that will look tricky for him i also think one term isn't enough for a president yeah. to change you a country around. i can understand uh, because he now he has uh, two or three years left is it uh, of his two, two and a half two and a two half and years half. left yeah and that's not that's short time to uh, do substantial changes and uh, all yeah, all over but uh, and also for the bitcoin project i need several years to uh, to show what what uh, what it can uh, can be for the um, for the citizens. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I don't think one term's enough, but I think you have a constitution, and you have to respect it. But he he thinks he, I mean, look, he will either turn out to be one the greatest president in the history of El Salvador, or just another uh, president in a long line of presidents who's promised something and not delivered. I really hope it's the former. I really hope he brings change to El Salvador. There, he has definitely been effective in reducing crime and reducing the murder rate. It absolutely has been effective. He's been effective yeah. at putting uh, El Salvador on the world stage with what he's done with Bitcoin. 
yeah, he 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 has been effective in certain areas. I think we are, I think what we won't really know until we know, and mm-hmm. that's the difficult thing. Uh, he's been nothing but good to me. I've asked for two interviews. He's given them both, uh, and he's let me ask any question I want. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's a tricky one. I expect uh, analysts and uh, people in the White House and the CIA and uh, international observers will be super critical, but he might turn out to be the greatest president they've ever had. We just don't know. He has uh, all the possibilities if he uh, can do this the right way, but yeah, we'll see. I think it yeah, was, uh, you know, the uh, of course the IMF and the World Bank uh, was not very pleased with uh, his decision to uh, let Bitcoin be uh, a legal tender. Also, obviously not uh, the White House. So, uh, but he said that uh, when he was asked about uh, the reaction from uh, the IMF and the World Bank, they haven't been so nice to us before. Other, <laughs> that's that's a very good very good answer. I think they are not very. They haven't been very nice to El Salvador mm, or right. other or other poor countries, really. So. Yeah, I mean, and that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Uh, yeah, um, but look, like I said, we just got to see. I think the Bitcoin thing is going to work out good for them. I think, but I think it will be a rocky journey. Um, you know, we'll have we have price gains and price drops, so they're going to have to deal with that. They're going to have people who adopt Bitcoin and then who ignore it. And we might go through some quiet spells. There'll be things they get right, and there'll be things they get wrong. But I think ultimately, we'll look back in ten years and go, "What a genius move that was." Yeah. Yeah. But it will be tough, especially uh, during a new beer cycle, and that would be uh, probably tough for for the project. So, but in the long run, it uh, we'll see if we are not dead in the long run, as uh, Keynes That's used it. to say. <laughs> uh, but one uh, one interesting thing uh, you also discussed with uh, Aaron uh, in uh, that episode was. Uh, these U.S. Uh, companies, uh, Starbucks, uh, McDonald's, um, they managed to uh, incorporate uh, uh, Bitcoin payments uh, in, in um, less than three months, maybe. And uh, yeah, and and that could. Uh, I mean, uh, the people in the headquarters have to think: uh, this, why, why don't we do this uh, globally? Uh, I mean, uh, it was so easy. It uh, reduces uh, our fees. Why don't we do this all over the world? Yeah, I mean, look, there are challenges with that. I mean, yes, they can save. I mean, I don't know what how it how it works out. I mean, there's what two to three percent on card fees that you have, uh, and then uh, a lot of companies can be uh, franchises, so they don't really have to. Uh, always send money back to the the I don't know, headquarter country, and and I don't really know how they move money around uh, particularly. But I think Bitcoin is too volatile for these companies to just keep it in Bitcoin. So at some point, even if they're saving three percent on transaction fees, can they convert that back into the local currency at a lower rate? Hmm. You know, and if they could do that instantly, I mean, why not accept Bitcoin? Um, we've just seen that uh, Amazon has stopped accepting Visa credit cards because the fees are too high, which is super interesting. Yeah. So I think it, I think I think it just highlights that. Again, I feel like I feel like we're um, I feel like consider this like a tree, and there's thousands of branches of things that Bitcoin can achieve and can do, and we're just breaking off some little ones here. Like there's a little, little one here that okay. In El Salvador, we're testing out Starbucks and McDonald's, having it great. We've got a little branch over here where El Salvador is testing routing around remittance. And like every single new use case we have or breaking story or something to do with Bitcoin, it's like we're breaking parts of this tree to see like how it works. And I think it's super interesting. And and is Bitcoin ready to be a, a currency used for e-commerce? I mean, technically, yes, but psychologically, no. And, and, and uh in terms of uh, business f- financial stability, no, because it's difficult for some. I mean, you couldn't put Amazon on the Bitcoin standard. They can operate with f- such a fluctuating currency. So I think there's just lots of little tests, little things we're learning about here. Yeah. 
Uh, it will be interesting to see. Uh, obviously, the volatility is an uh, issue. And um, yeah, I don't know if you, I mentioned uh, this guy, Brett Scott, to you. I don't know if you read anything uh, he has written. He's an anthropologist, nope. um, okay. but he was an early Bitcoiner um, and he grew gradually more critical to uh, Bitcoin. It's interesting because uh, most uh, critical Bitcoin lacks, uh, well, the, the critics lack uh, knowledge and uh, it's superfluous. It's, uh, yeah, it's not interesting really, but uh, this guy clearly knows Bitcoin and his critic is uh, more interesting. And uh, what he points out is that, uh, you know, the, the, the main functions of money, the, the, three, uh, the three main functions, medium of exchange, store of value and, and unit of account. Unit of account. Um, and he says that it's the third one, the unit of account that counts, so to speak. That's the important one, and uh, that's where Bitcoin, uh, at least for some time, will have uh, great problems. Uh, we are nowhere near uh, Bitcoin as a unit of account. Well, we're about? still uh, we're still speculating on what this thing is, and we're still remonetizing the world. So there's, yeah, you know, most people want to save it and hold it. Um, so that doesn't worry me too much now. That's not, I mean, if you're on a Bitcoin standard, which I am, I am using Bitcoin as a unit of account. I'm measuring what things cost in certain things in Bitcoin and measuring what they're going to be costing in the future. So for example, I'm buying a house right now and I used to, you know, previous houses, I'd put down the biggest possible deposit I could. Now I'm not, I'm putting down the smallest possible deposit because over 25 years, I want to hold as much Bitcoin as possible. Um, I don't mm. believe, I think I can outperform Mass of my Bitcoin massively outperforms the appreciation of the house value over 25 years. So, um, yeah, I mean, certain people are starting to use it as a unit of account for their lives. They're living on a Bitcoin standard. But we, what we're talking about here really is like, will companies and shops start pricing things in Bitcoin? Not now. Not now. Some no. do, but it's, a, but it's a fluctuating price. It fluctuates based on the uh, exchange rate. But that's not to say it's we a risky. Get that. uh, that's a risky business, I, uh, I think, to price to price goods and services in Bitcoin. That would be um, quite risky, I think. Well, uh, this guy uh, Brett Scott he calls um, Bitcoin for limited edition special numbers instead of money. And wow. in in one way, he is he's uh, he's correct. It it is yeah. kind of a limited edition special numbers. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> but it's also more than that. And I, yeah, it seems to me also that he doesn't see the forest for the trees. But. That's another thing. Uh, you mentioned Bitcoin, uh, the Bitcoin standard. I, I just happened to uh, read uh, Saifedin Amos' popular book, The Bitcoin Standard. I guess you have read it. Yeah, I'm reading uh, it again at the moment. Really? Yeah. Um, I have to say I found it, uh, should I would use the word rubbish? It's. Oh, you don't like it? No, I don't. It's more. It's more like a pamphlet. It's propaganda, and it's wow. so one-dimensional. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, a lot of people in the Bitcoin space see it as uh, the the Bible for what money is and why Bitcoin is money. Uh, I don't like the whole section on modern art because I think that is uh, propaganda. Uh, my brother just listened. My brother is is being orange pilled at the moment. He just listened to his interview with Jordan Peterson, and he felt like it was good, but there wasn't enough pushback on some of Saferdeen's ideas. Like he took Austrian economics as an economic model as gospel, when really there are other people that challenge that and say Austrian economics is more of a political ideology than an economic school of thought. So I'd be interested, why, why, why are you not keen on the Bitcoin standard? Yeah, for, for those reasons. Uh, 
uh, I questioned uh, the political uh, side of this, and that's back to uh, back to uh, Brett Scott. Um, one of the things that uh, worried him was that he found, uh, especially young uh, young boys, age of seventeen, eighteen, quoting Hayek and Formisus, and uh, to him that was. Um, yeah, that was not a good sign, and I I, I agree that uh, it tends to be very one-dimensional and uh, kind of full blinders on and uh, not getting the broad picture when it comes to uh, money and monetary theory. So it's kind of limited, I would say, and I, I as I said, I question the political uh, view here. Tends to. Uh, well, of course, Bitcoiners are uh, the full spectrum, but uh, a lot of them uh, will lean towards libertarianism and libertarians and uh, yeah. also right wing. And it doesn't fit me, but um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, it doesn't fit me either, but I, I, I don't actually think there is one school of thought that, that you can say objectively works. works. Uh, I just... I think there are lots of different ideas uh, and it's really interesting to watch people fight. I'm certainly not a Keynesian, um, but I'm also not a libertarian, so I don't fully follow the Austrian school. Um, but I can't really, I can give you like an actual accurate description of, of what I think a perfect economic school would be or an economic model. It's just not what I'm, it's not where my uh, skills are at. Neither can I. So, but I follow you uh, uh, in that view. I do. Uh, but I also, uh, when it comes to uh, Cypher and uh, Amos, his uh, totally res uh, lacks respect for, let's say, Keynes. I mean, uh, you can disagree with Keynes, but you don't have to describe him as Satan. That's it's uh, it's childish, I think. Say that again. <laughs> I think it's childish. Uh, the way he describes Keynes, it's uh, yeah, clearly uh, he, uh, despite everything, Keynes uh, stood for. And um, yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, Safer Dean is a prickly character, and uh, for all his good work, he's not really. Uh, He's not really fond of people disagreeing with him, or uh, he's a uh, block happy, and and uh, he has his way of thinking, which doesn't work for me. I think uh, I think important ideas should be discussed, and I think um, it demonstrates a, a certain amount of fragility if you're not open to people disagreeing with you. And uh, me and him clashed on. Uh, we originally clashed on climate change because uh, I. I said, you're an idiot if you don't believe climate change is happening and caused by humans. And he disagreed with me. Um, so that's where we originally fell out. And, you know, and I disagree with his ideas on modern art. I think uh, I don't like anyone describing modern art as degenerate art. Art is subjective. So we disagree on those two issues. But we agree, mm. we agree on sound money. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't 100% follow his school of thought. But, like, I do think he has done some important work. Um, I just think he needs to... Or a pair of bollocks sometimes. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I think Bitcoiners deserve more than uh, it feels like the Bitcoin standard has become the Bible for for most Bitcoiners, and I think that um, we or they deserve more. But it's perhaps easier if you if you don't. Uh, if you're not willing to compromise and you're just uh, putting your blinders on, then it's easier, probably. Yeah, well, look, it works for him. That's his modus operandi, and we all have ours. I mean, you know, are any of us perfect? But I think he is clearly a net good. He's brought a lot of people into Bitcoin, so. Absolutely, yeah. I, I thought uh, some of your episodes lately, I could sense um, a more critical uh, view on parts of uh, Bitcoin and Bitcoin community. Uh, was it just an existential crisis or has, have you changed in some ways your opinion? Yeah, 
I wouldn't say existential. I'd just say it's like an, just a, I'm a, a human evolving and trying to understand how the world works, my place in the world, and and uh, just maybe maturing. I mean, you know, Bitcoin four years ago when I started the podcast was magic internet money. It wasn't a legal tender in a country. It wasn't the treasury on major um, uh, balance sheets such as Tesla and MicroStrategy. So we're in a very different world now, inside and outside of Bitcoin. And we're facing this thing growing. And I think we have to ask more critical, critical questions of what does a Bitcoin standard mean? What does hyper-Bitcoinization mean? Um, so I just, me just evolving my own understanding and wanting to ask more critical questions and what this all means and, and where we're going and the asymmetric topics that touch Bitcoin. So no, it's not any kind of like existential crisis. It's just more of a you know, maturing and you know, in, in, in a, in a bull market, bear market, you want things to heat up. And then when they do, you're kind of like, oh, take me back to the bear market. And um, yeah, so I'm just really just questioning what this all means. Like, where is it going? And you know, are, are, we, are we thinking this through critically? People who want the end of the state, have they really thought through what it means? Like, mm. if there was no state, like, is mm. that a better world? I'm not sure it is. I think on no, some no, measure it is. Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, and... I know people like there's a big desire for freedom, but free, what's the net cost of the freedom that you want? If the net cost of the freedom you want is a more dangerous, disorganized, violent world, well, is that progression or is that a step back? You know, is it progression that we have democracy in you know, large parts of the world and, and we, we do have uh, parts of society that try and help those who need help? I mean, mm. it's easy to criticize government because they are mainly shit. Um, mm. But would we be in a worse place without them? Uh, so I, that's another thing I'm questioning now, and I get insulted, shouted at for it, but I, I think it's important to ask these critical questions about you know, the governance and macroeconomics and yeah, what, what the role of Bitcoin is in all of this. Yeah, 100%. I hope you'll continue. Uh, I really appreciate uh, you throw in some critical questions. Uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. you, you know, there's a saying... Um, you don't change Bitcoin. Bitcoin changes you, and I think mm -hmm. that's uh, very true. Very true, and I think we probably experience it all of us being in this space for some while. Yeah, yeah, it does change you. But it, it, but I, I've gone through phases of becoming more Bitcoin, less Bitcoin, uh, pro Bitcoin, questioning Bitcoin, and, uh, and whenever I feel comfortable, I kind of have to kind of shift myself and say. Yeah, why am I comfortable? Okay, what am I? What am I missing? What am I not thinking about here? Who do I need to talk to? Yeah. So uh, when you're too uh, confident, you are getting worried. That's interesting. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm also uh, I'm also constantly uh, questioning things, and uh, I'm not hundred percent sure of anything, but. Um, other than, than uh, that Bitcoin is extremely interesting and it's, uh, it's a phenomenon that, uh, well, it has taken almost, well, most of my time the last 10 years and uh, it will probably uh, do so the, the next 10 if I'm alive. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's been a fascinating four years for me doing this podcast. Uh, I'm I'm certainly not living the life I thought I would be living. I, I wonder where we'll be in another four years. Hopefully you and me are talking and reviewing it again. And maybe I'll hopefully, interview the Hopefully we meet, uh, we meet at a conference. I, I really miss, yeah. uh, especially the, yeah, you are, you are traveling uh, uh, all over the world, but I missed the uh, Baltic Honey Badger conference. It, uh, I don't know. You, uh, you were there in... Uh, 2019, the last one. Yeah, I was. Um, it was you great. MC'd I it. think I am seen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great conference. Yeah. Because of the size, the, the the way uh, it was uh, arranged, I liked everything. So hopefully, it will be um, a new conference. We'll see. And now it's of course the Bitcoin conference in uh, Miami, and that's yeah. got all the attention. That's a huge one, and uh, that's a completely different one, I guess. 
Yeah, well, I'll be emptying that one as well. Mm. Is it in? Is it in April? The twenty twenty two? Or when is it? April. Yeah, we'll find out. Second, I think it's second weekend of April. Yeah. That in Miami. Nice yeah. Mm. Which is a cool place. Yeah, probably never been there. Uh, yeah. Some questions uh, from uh, the students. Uh, one is wor uh, worrying about uh, El Salvador. Sounds more like Russia or Belarus to me than a dem democracy. Do you think the Bitcoin community jumped too quickly on Bukele and El Salvador? Well, okay, so good question. Uh, no, I don't think it's like uh, Belarus or Russia right now, uh, but that, that is a fair thing to be concerned about. But Putin is a certainly a dictator and has uh, imprisoned his political competitors and uh, let's say how do I put this in the kindest possible way there have been some uh, deaths of critical journalists or uh, ex-Russian uh, ex-Russians who have moved to other countries we had the poisoning of people in the UK the no, I can't remember the name of the drop, the, the poison they used, Nova check or whatever it was. And, hmm. um, uh, so, so Russia is very different. Uh, Putin certainly is a is a, a dictator, and hmm. will stop at nothing uh, to maintain his power and wealth. Uh, Belarus again, Lukashenko is uh, he's like a mini Putin, supported by yeah. Putin. Yeah. Um, I think at the moment uh, there were free and fair elections in El Salvador. And Bukele won uh, uh, with a, a very commanding uh, percentage of, of the vote. People wanted change, and he has delivered change. Uh, he has broken the constitution. Well, he will break the constitution. He would say he hasn't, but yeah, a lot of people argue about that. But he will serve again, and I'm. I don't think he will need to fix the election to win. I think no. people like him, and he will win again. So I, don't, I think compare. It's 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 a bit extreme to, to compare to Russia and Belarus, but there are certain things that we should be on guard about. Um, uh, yeah. Hmm. And it's a question, who would be your dream guest in uh, what Bitcoin did? Oh, <laughs> gosh, I mean, the, the, the person that's missing on my list that I really want to interview yet, I haven't had, is Jack Dorsey. I mean, he's yeah, of doing course, a lot of Bitcoin. Of I've got questions I, I guess want to ask you him about. I guess you approached him and... Uh... So. I mean, he said he would. He said he would do it. So hopefully, will at some point. I, I want to talk to him about Bitcoin, but I also want to talk to him about censorship because uh, there are two important topics that his name come up against. Uh, but uh, I'd also, if I could just interview anyone, I would love to interview James Hetfield from Metallica. I just would love to do that. But it's got nothing to do with Bitcoin. Yeah, sorry. Can you repeat that? Who? James Hetfield, Metallica. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay. Nothing about Bitcoin, <laughs> but. No. <laughs> yeah, you uh, you had another podcast, Defiance, for a brief while. Um, any plans of uh, starting up again, a uh, similar mm. podcast? or? No, do you know what? I learned a lot of lessons from that. When you want two podcasts, you double your work, but you can use your single podcast to uh, deliver the same amount of content with less work. So... You know, I had some fun doing it, but it was uh, it was a wrong decision. I should have just focused on the Bitcoin show. So I am, it's, I'm just doing the Bitcoin thing now. I'm focused on that. Uh, I can cover other defiant style topics on there, yeah. but um, yeah, I see, so, I see, understandable, perfectly understandable. Then there's a question yeah. about um, if you have to choose between the SEC passing a spot ETF and have Klopp on your show, what would it be? Oh, <laughs> that's a tough yeah. one. <laughs> I mean, yeah, oh God, that, whoever wrote that question was a good one. I think <laughs> I, have, I think I have to pick Jurgen Klopp. I think I have to. <laughs> yeah. He's he's a legend. He's a uh, thirty years. I went without Liverpool winning the title. I was ten when they won it again. I had to wait thirty years for us to finally win the title again. And he did that and he brought us the Champions League and exciting yeah. football to Liverpool. Yeah, we can wait for an ETF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And then I have to say to one of my students, Rune, I hope you heard uh, Peter's uh, remark there. We had a we had a discussion uh, lately about what was your favorite uh, football team. 
And of course, it's Liverpool. It's mine, but you know I'm buying a football team. You you're buying a football team, Bedford or? <laughs> yeah, Bedford, and hopefully really? tomorrow I'm gonna yeah tomorrow <laughs> I'm gonna agree the deal and I'm gonna turn them into the Bitcoin club. I'm gonna make them the team that Bitcoiners worldwide follow and. Oh, you yeah. you're like the sheikhs of uh, Saudi Arabia and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> With a lot less. You're money. joining the league of uh, of uh, sheikhs and uh, questionable persons. <laughs> Uh, Rune thinks I was uh, Arsenal because I hate Tottenham. No, I hate Tottenham because all my friends support them and act like they're a big club. They won't accept that Tottenham are a small club. And I just, I don't like Tottenham and I like laughing at them. But no, I'm not an Arsenal fan. I'm Liverpool. Liverpool and Bedford. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, I think uh, we could have uh, gone on for... I don't know. You you have probably other things to do today as well, but um, well, we can I do think, this again another time. Yeah, that would be uh, really uh, that would be really nice. Thank you again for Maybe. taking your time. It was uh, it was really uh, nice talking to you, and uh, also my students uh, love this. So uh, keep up your good work, and thanks for showing up. No worries. Thanks for having us, and keep working hard, students. Got a good teacher here. Yeah. And keep stacking sats. <laughs> Take care. Stay humble, stack sats. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye.